This is going to be part three of the series of tutorials for completing SIMNET uh, PowerPoint Chapter 2, Independent Project 2-6. Uh, and when we finished part two, we got as far as um, converting the smart art and inserting the dog, uh, which was the 3D model, and adjusting it. So we're up to step number 12. In step number 12, they want us to insert a new slide after slide number five with the title and content layout. So first of all, how do we insert a slide after slide number five? By selecting number five. If we select number five and insert it, insert it right after that. And under home, we go to new slide and out of all the different um, layouts, we select the one that has title and content and save. Then they, need, they want us to insert something into the title. Let's see what it is. They want the words item we items we need. Uh, so I'm going to copy that maybe by right clicking, going here. And remember, if I just paste, it'll paste the red color with it. So I go to paste and paste text only items we need. The next thing they want to do is use those shortcuts on uh, title and content to insert one of the things, one of the shortcuts, which is a table. So uh, insert a table with three columns and five rows. Three columns, five rows. Click on the icon of the table, dialog opens, number of columns they want three, number of rows they want five and it inserts a table. Save. The next part is just like a suggestion or like a trick that I use and you don't have to use it because you could just do exactly what the instructions say, which is to type all this text in the one, two, three columns and one, two, three, four, five rows, as long as you type it exactly the way they want you to and so on. I always look for like, you know, more efficient ways to do things. So I'm thinking, what if I highlighted all the text starting from cleaning and going all the way down, just like, you know, starting from that cleaning from the right before the C, dragging to the right and down. And I just highlighted all the words and right click and copy. And what if I go to the table now, in this case, if I use the old um, method that I just showed you, which is going home and paste and paste text only. See, it pastes everything into one block. So that's not what I want to do. I'm going to undo. So in this case, I'm going to use a regular paste. Just click on the paste button and it actually pastes all the text. The only little difference would be that it took the red color of the text. And when I look at the screenshot, they want it to be black, but that's easy enough to change. I can just select all the red text. I like to you know, select backwards. Um, and then I can go to text color and choose black. And that's it. And it saved me a bunch of time. If you think that typing those words in the boxes would take less time, definitely do that. Be my guest. One way or another, we got a table. It's got three columns, five rows, and it's got all the right words in it. Um, Back to the instructions. They want to increase the font size to 20. And I do that simply by selecting the whole table, going here and choosing 20. Save. The next thing they want us to do is um, to adjust the column width so each column fits the longest line of text, like this. You see right now the word bedding is wrapping down because it's not wide enough. So I want this to be just as wide as it needs to be for mop heads, which is the widest word here. And the paper products and cleaning doesn't have to be any wider than this. And the dog and cat play does, oops, I don't want to move that, undo. I want to make it narrower. The dog and cat play doesn't have to be any narrower. Oop, it's a little too narrow. I will adjust the columns until, yep, each, each uh, line is just as wide as it needs to be. Um, and I will look at this, yep, they actually want the dog and cat play to be a little 
that over. Which means I can make this a little wider. Which means I can make this little, this little playing around with it a little bit. Um, uh, one more way I think that it could be done is, let's see, table design. That's actually a good enough way of doing it. Because there's an auto um, size and so on, but I don't think we need to use that. Because as long as each word is just as long as each column is just as long as it needs to be that's good enough what do they want us to do next center the table on the slide using a line center and middle align what they mean is that they want it to be centered both vertically and horizontally so here's under table layout here's align and i will align center which aligns it side by side but i'm also going to align middle which aligns it up and down Um, then they want to insert two icons, one to be on top of this table, one to be on the bottom. And to uh, insert icons, we click the icons button. And the icons button is under insert. So insert, and here are icons. And it opens up a whole gallery of icons. Again, on the Mac, it'll open the same gallery of icons, but it'll be here on the right, but it'll have exactly the same stuff. Now, I can either go to animals. On the Mac, you'll have to like, you know, scroll, scroll, scroll until you get to animals. And then I can start looking, where's the cat? Here's the cat. Is it this one? Is it this one? Or I could just do it simply by not looking for animals, but looking specifically for cat. And here's the cat they want and I insert that. I'll move it more or less here, and then insert another icon, and look for dog, and the specific dog they want is, um, let's see, this one, and move it here, and save and the next thing they want is to resize them uh, so select both cat and dog and insert them they could do it one at a time or to get, as long as they both get inserted change the cat height to two inches and the width adjusts automatically so cat you are going to become height two inches and the height adjusts automatically and position the cat above the table so the cat looks like it's standing on the table like this and change the dog height to 3.5 and the width automatically adjust and position the dog like you know kind of on the ground under the table so mr dog you are getting to be height 3.5 which of course i can type in but it's easy for me to just click 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 Oop, i went too far 3.5 and the dog is going to stand right here close enough to the screenshot yes and of course i'm going to save next step 14 convert a list to a smart art graphic which we did already it's just going to be a different one display side 7 and open the choose smart art graphic dialog box in the pictures group they want us to choose a specific one called picture line up now this is where it's going to be a little different for Mac and Windows, but I'm going to show you a way that's going to work for both Mac and Windows. So first of all, I'm going to go to slide number seven, choose this and select the bullet list. The second thing I will do is under, uh, under home, there's a button here to convert to smart art graphic. Now, the easiest way to do this is instead of looking for more smart art graphics is simply to do the very first one, which is not the right one. But once it's a smart art graphic, I can go to smart art design and choose from all these layouts the right one. And here it's much easier to see. I'll click more layouts on the Mac. I'll see like a whole gallery of them. And there's a group which is called picture. And under picture, they're looking for the one that is called uh, like a picture lineup. And it's the one that looks like flags. It's is this one. No, this is title picture lineup. Here it is. This is the one that's just 
picture lineup. On the Mac, it'll be arranged differently, but there's going to be a group called picture and there's going to be an icon that looks like little flags that called picture lineup and I click OK and OK and they're all converted to this shape. I'll do it again. Let me control Z and control Z. OK, again, how did I do this? Selected the box with the list, then went under home to convert to smart art chose whichever one now on windows you can actually open the smart art graphics and go directly to the gallery on mac you'll just choose the first one and then go to smart art design and open the gallery of layouts where you will say oh where are all these and you'll see you'll have to scroll down on a mac to see more layouts the category is picture and it's the one that looks like little flags here it is, this one, picture lineup. They didn't make it easy to find. Then the rest of it is kind of easy, let me save. Uh, we will insert a picture in each one, we just need to know which one. Um, each picture placeholder is automatically resized. Insert five pictures, click the picture icon on the shape to insert the picture, click from file and browse to locate the resources from the ones you downloaded way before step one and unzipped. And the one they want is first daycare and then country strolls. Let's do that first. So click from a file, downloads, resources, open the resources. And the first one they want is daycare, I believe, if I remember correctly. Daycare, and then country stro scrolls, strolls, click from file. On Mac, I believe it'll take you directly to uh, br browsing your computer, as long as you know where it is. And the second one is country stroll, and the next one is uh, royal food and groom. Let's see if I can remember. First, um, Royal, then food, then groom. Done. Save. Of course, if I were you, I would check that those are exactly the right pictures that they're asking for. So I did all of these things. They want me, that's almost the last thing to do, to apply the gallery transition to all the slides. We've done this before. I go to the very first slide. I go to transitions. I open the gallery on Mac. That little button to open the gallery is going to be, uh, the gallery of transitions is going to be here on the bottom center. On Windows, it's on the bottom right. And um, unfortunately, they are not arranged alphabetically, so I will have to kind of look for them. Let's see, where is gallery? Here, gallery, found it. Once I, they don't tell me to change any of its options, all they're telling me is to apply to all. So now all my slides have that little star and they all have that transition called gallery. Save. And at this point, they're telling you to save and close the presentation. Now, personally, I don't think you should close the presentation. Just save it, of course. Why not to say, why not to close it? Just in case I forgot something, I'll you know have more attempts. Because what I'm about to do is to actually test my luck and submit it. I think I showed you all the right steps, but I'm human. I might have done something wrong. So I'm going to downloads. I'm going to here it is. I'm going to open, I am going to submit, cross my fingers, let's see what it gives me. And it gave me 100, which means all the steps I showed you, if you just follow those steps, you should get 100 too. Good luck.